Oh, you want to do this again? Yep. Okay. Let's go. All right, let's go. All right. So to recap. Quick recap is. We went to went baseball, to baseball on opening Tuesday, night. Tuesday night. Yep. Started running a fever. Low grade, 99 Friday, to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, coming back Tuesday from Cherokee. Yep. Um, that was because, our anniversary. Yep. Because I knew that, you know, I have stomach issues. I have Crohn's. Um, I always have Cipro and I have Flagyl just in case something happens. So I had been taking antibiotics. I just had this feeling that I was getting an infection. And when you've dealt with them so many times like we have, um, it, it just becomes second nature. So I've been on antibiotics. When we came back on right. Tuesday, I had taken a dose of Tylenol and it was like seven o'clock at night and I wasn't due for my next dose until nine. And we all know you get sick worse at night right. and um i was running 103.5 degree temperature and we decided let's run down to the local hospital yep. and see what they say and when we got down there it was 105.1 right so they started administering an antibiotics and tylenol and you know they were doping me up with as much stuff as they could get into me but they didn't want me there right. um, because they, they weren't comfortable. So they transported me to, to my main hospital of Duke. And so I got to Duke on Wednesday afternoon via transport and yeah. I was here for a week. And then that was after your 105 temperature. Yes. I was here for a week and then I went home and, you know, they couldn't find anything. Nothing, nothing grew, grew on the cultures. On the cultures. Right. And a lot of that was Labs because I pretty good. was because I had already been on antibiotics. Yeah, you were um, taking what Cipro, right? Oops, I said Cipro and Flagyl. Mm, <laughs> so I was taking Cipro and Flagyl, and then they gave me their antibiotics. And so, you wait a minute. My reflection. Oh. Keep going. Anyways, so um, I I didn't have antibiotics for what a week. Uh, Give or take, yeah. Yeah, About other than week? what they had given me in the hospital, right? And the fever started coming back that Friday night. Mm -hmm. And so um, we just we just kind of monitored them. And when they got above that level that infectious diseases told me to watch, um, I contacted them. They said, you know, you might want to come up to the ER and come in through the emergency room. Yeah. So we came up here, um, got readmitted. And um, it was just so happened to be that when I came through the emergency room, it was all the same doctors that had brought me through the last time. Yep. So they knew my whole medical history, which was nice and um, got me in a room. And this time things started growing and um, my well, I grew one soil based um, blood bug. And then right about the time I was due to leave here. I grew another soil-based bug. Yep. So um, one was gram negative. And one was gram one positive. One was gram positive. One of them, you were the first documented person in North America with it. And the second one, you were the seventh or eighth documented person with it. But they said you were the first person with Crohn's to get it. Right. One of them, well, I know you're looking up the names of them because yeah. I don't remember. The uh, One of them, I don't know which one was first and which one was second. Right. The rhizobium. Um, radiobacter was formerly agrobacterium is the gram negative and the rhodococcus or urethropolis is the gram positive. I think the gram negative you were the first one with. Because I think they I were really know. shocked by that because they said that it was the kind that like it spreads the nitrogen in the soil for soybeans, specifically soybeans, Yes, which is... That's the weird part because they were yeah, like, we, we don't know. I mean, I've not been around a soybean field. Nope. You know, we, we've thought about, you know, could I got, you know, where did they get the baseball dirt from? You know, is yeah, it we, something we I picked of, up there? Yeah, we thought um, that. Have they, you know, they've done some kind of like construction like stuff near where we live um, where they've cut down a bunch of trees. But that's um, been like well over But they brought in some field dirt. Yeah, I know. That's so, that's, I mean, where did they get their field dirt? Right. I mean, I don't know. And then I've had, you know, like, I've had nurse practitioners and things like that say, is it because of something I ate that had soybean oil or soybeans in it? You know, did I get it, you know, orally that way? We have no clue. We have no clue. And we don't so have a doctor house for those of you that have seen the TV show. Yeah, right. We don't have a doctor house that's going to come in and swab my whole environment and, and let me know where I picked up this um, soybean bug from. 
Um, we just know that God made dirt and dirt don't hurt unless you're me. Um, no more five second rule for you. Yeah, no more five second rule. And you know, and you got to delete your profile at farmersonly.com. I don't have one of those, but okay. <laughs> I ain't that. I know you do. That's still a funny joke, though. But nevertheless, I should have never said it. If I would have never said it, that's all right. I said it one time in a joke like form, and everybody took off and ran that's with just it. Funny, that's why <laughs> it doesn't matter. Anyways, <laughs> so, either way, it's just, it's just aggravating. We know you're not messing around with farmers. So, but either, and way. I mean, we, you know, we even thought back. You know, did we drive by a soybean field? Well, that's what I was thinking too. Because I mean, there's a lot of farm fields between, you know, where we live and where both of my warehouses that I work at, and. But we hadn't traveled, not yeah. like months. Right. Like we, yeah, you, I mean, you're at home pretty much all the time. And, and when we walk every night, we walk in the city. It's not like we're walking out in the fields. I mean, we walk in the middle of a, of a city. So. I mean, I don't, I don't even know the last time we saw your mom or your grandma. Yeah, your it's been a while. And she lives soul. out in the country yeah, next I mean, to fields. But, but I mean, that was like, what, right after Christmas? Yeah. She broke we, her hip. Yeah, we saw her at Christmas. Or pelvis. Yeah, she broke her, pel her pelvis. Yeah, so I mean, we don't we have no clue. It's it's a freak of nature. Yep. So you spent two weeks, two different times at the hospital. Mm -hmm. The one place they transported you, but both times you were at Duke for a week. Yeah, I had um, my I had my line pulled on Saturday. I wanted it pulled Friday and replaced on Monday. They pulled it Saturday. You have to wait forty eight hours. Right. They replaced the line Tuesday early Tuesday morning. It was like 5 a.m., 6 a.m.? 7. I think seven, it was 7. Something like that, yeah. Because they knew that on Tuesday I was leaving you, the hospital. You gave them no choice. You told them I was, I was leaving. leaving the hospital by 2 o'clock. I told them by 2 o'clock I'm yeah. leaving the hospital. You gave them an ultimatum. And I had told them that when they admitted me, I said, look. The I said, week before. Yeah. I said, whatever you're going to do, I need to be out of here Tuesday by, by 2 o'clock. And um, the infectious disease doctor, he said, I'll have you out of here by Tuesday at 2 o'clock. And I said, okay. And he said, now, why do we need to do this? And I said, because I'm going to a concert. And he said, who are we going to go see? And I said, we're going to go see the Food Fighters. And he said, no, you can stay in the hospital. I'll go with your husband and we'll watch the Food Fighters. <laughs> and I said, that's not an option. This is like a bucket list item. I right. want to go see Dave Grohl. And so they had me out of there. Yep, they did. Tuesday. Um, well, they tried to hold me. And yeah, I kept telling to. them I was yeah. leaving at 2 o'clock. Oh, we didn't play that game. But, but we no, left. I had to take antibiotics every eight hours. Yep. And so the goal was that two o'clock they were going to give me my next thirty-minute dose of antibiotics, mm -hmm. so that I would be done um, at like ten ten thirty ish at night, um, because we knew the concert wasn't going to be done until late, and then we had an hour and a half drive right. home. Um, and and this way I'd have at least antibiotics in me. And my son was at home, and he took he took the package the package in and put it in the go. fridge because I had to do this every eight hours. Yep. So when we got home, I hooked up, and then my eight hours for the next two and a half weeks started, and we went from there. But um, I am officially okay. Yeah, you're good now. You're and solid. If he should happen Causing to chaos. to post photos or oh, videos yeah, I'm, I'm of the concert, pictures. um, I did not make it through the concert. Um, you when, you when did you've, pretty good. When you've been under anesthesia yep. and strong anesthesia and pain medicine every two hours and then you know you leave the hospital and i mean i had blurred vision when i left the hospital yeah. and i got i got there and i you know we had to stand outside in the heat and i ended up yeah, sitting they, down and, and was, I, I think i panicked everyone yeah you did because i still had my hospital band on yeah. and i sat down and they were like whoa let me get her some water so they started got bringing chair, me water and water. chairs and yeah. but you know they had everybody stand up outside and they let you in to buy your merch and stuff early, but you couldn't get drinks, you couldn't get food, you couldn't sit down, you you couldn't do anything. Yeah, you couldn't. You were like stuck in the outer past. ring. Yeah, so the venue, it's it's Coastal Credit Union, or it's it's uh, Walnut Creek uh, here in Raleigh, and uh, we're there in Raleigh, and it's kind of shaped like a horseshoe because it's a out a massive outdoor amphitheater, and when you get halfway to the horseshoe. The, the points are what connect you to all the food, bathrooms, vending, and all that stuff. But um, 
it it just they wouldn't let you go past that point you were stuck at the back part of the horseshoe and it was just miserable You're, there's no shade there was no trees it was just it was pointless to let us in early for merch if you can't go and sit and get comfortable and at least buy drinks. Uh, so that was pretty miserable overall. Well, they're just getting in their car. I give him kudos. Okay. He picked her up. Okay. And he, I mean, he, we're in the older, parking garage, as you can in, tell. He's an older I'm man. sure that's on the, he, uh, no, you can't see it. He picked her up out of that wheelchair. Put her in her chair. And he put her in the front seat. And he's an older man. Well, good for him. I was like kind of shocked. I know my that's, eyes just kind of shook. I mean, he, I mean, he's unlike the person next to me who is parked inside of the freaking uh, little stripe chair thing. Yeah, it's the loading part of it. So they're half in the park spot, and half in the uh, the loading the loading thing. Yeah. I mean, when this white car leaves, if you want to back out and pull in their spot, you can. No, it's fine. As long as we're in our lines, I don't care. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll double check. But anyways, so that's it. We went to the Foo Fighters. We saw them. Um, it was a fantastic show and I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Becky, on the other hand, did have, uh, you know, some moments where she would pass out. Uh, there's some pictures and stuff. I'll probably post those, but anyways, I would, um, you would wake up for certain songs. Like you woke up for my hero and monkey wrench, the kind of the more mainstream. The ones that I really, ones. really wanted to listen yeah. to. You were I awake for the end when they did the teacher. And uh, Everlong, obviously, was a closing song, and you were awake for all of that. So let's not do any big, sappy, fucking goodbye shit. Let's just do this. A really good experience but, you know I, I, I didn't get to like normally i would stand up or i'd sing along and i didn't i didn't have the energy for any of that and right. i think it kind of it took away from my my enjoyment of the concert because i was constantly you know having to open my eyes well, you, you and would try it's to, like you would wake up and you, you would look around really and you would groggy, talk really and then you would groggy. just kind of like do that whole pass out thing and it was to me it was funny because everybody probably thought you were drunk yeah. And there were a couple of people I saw that were drunk that did do that. Obviously, they don't know that you just come out of the hospital. You were still under anesthesia. Yeah. I but. would have I would have preferred them to have removed my line on Friday and put the new one in Monday. Yeah, that would have been. And that's what they wanted. But um, radiology or whatever it is that does that decided to do it on their own terms. And they didn't do it in time. So are you freaking out? Yeah, because you are all lopsided. All right, I'll adjust. So on that note, we're gonna we're gonna end the video. Hopefully, that kind of gets everybody caught up, and um, maybe I won't run nobody over while I'm real on the car. Well, somebody so. doesn't jump in there real quick and take it. All right, we're gonna go. Bye. You gonna say bye? Bye. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs>